Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Bas, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own film grain. So, here you can see this grainy stuff happening, and I've all created this in After Effects myself in just a couple of minutes. So, we're going to make a new composition, and uh, let's make it 4K. Let's call this grain. Okay, 10 seconds, 25 frames per second is fine. Then we're just going to create a little uh, ellipse, make it white and make it really small like that. So it's barely there. All right, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to P for position on my keyboard and I'm going to option click on the stopwatch to create a new expression. I'm going to type in wiggle and then open parentheses and then let's say 1,10. You can see what happens here. So you can get a little, let's just zoom in here, a little bit of a wiggle here. It's just slowly moving around. And the first uh, number actually is how fast it's going. So if I put it at 100, it's going to bounce really fast. And the second number is how big the movement should be. So I want this movement to be really big. So I'm going to make this something like 2000. So then it will jump crazily all over the screen, as you can see. And let's call this uh, dot. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate this. So pressing Command D. And if I do that, you can see that the dot will move. It's gone. Yeah, there you see. And if I move, if I duplicate it again and again and again and again, it keeps popping up all over the place because it creates this random wiggle. So it all all of them will be in a different position. So duplicate it a bunch of times, and then you can see I've got all of these speckles thingies flying around. Duplicate it a couple more times if you want. So there we have this. Select all of them and then press Command Shift C to pre-compose and call this dots. Just dots. And we're gonna we can duplicate this and then maybe turn this one around like that while holding shift so perfectly around so we have a bit more difference like that. So we get some nice random dots. Then we're going to turn these off. We're gonna do this again, but then create a little bit of a longer line. So a dot that looks like this, a bit more stretched out. So we have this kind of thingy here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Put the anchor point in the middle like that okay yeah so it's a bit more stretch out and I'm gonna do the same thing here if I go into the dots and then I press double E E E I can copy this expression here and do the same thing with, with position on this one and then option click and then press command V to paste that expression and then duplicate this a bunch of times as well while holding command D so now we get this little shape here and then we're going to press command shift D uh, sorry, <laughs> Command Shift C, and then I call, let's call this dots wide, and I'm going to copy this one and place it here. Turn this off. I'm going to zoom in here, and then I'm going to turn this standing up, so it's a more of a longer standing thing. So we're going to duplicate those a bunch of times as well. Call this dots long, and then maybe um, yeah, that's nice. So if I turn them all on. You can see all of these little dots moving on the screen and then let's just create a really really small one so maybe if I just do it like this and then put the scale at uh, 50 so it's really really small like that and then we're going to do the position and then paste that same expression there again whoops go in here copy this this expression again and paste it over paste it over there so now duplicate these a bunch of times and if I then duplicate all of those and then maybe shift them over there and then we get a really big I want this to be a really fine grid of smaller ones so press command shift C dots small duplicate those again and then turn them around like this so now we have a lot of these different small ones. And then if I turn them all on, we get this grain effect, but it's a bit too much and too heavy. So I'm going to add some Gaussian blur and some opacity to these layers. So for the dots long, let's go to help and go to type in Gaussian blur. Maybe put it at five. And let's just turn everything off. And if you're here, you can see it. if you turn this on and off, it's a little bit more dim. Let's make it 10. So it's a little bit less visible and then paste them on some of those. Oop, turn them all on. 
No, and I, I think these dots, these big dots need some opacity or some Gaussian blur. Um, open them all up, press T to open the opacity. Maybe make them a little bit less visible. So 40, 40 on this one and it does 40 as well. So they're a little bit less intrusive like that. So it gets a little heavy over here because it's a lot of these dots need to need to be calculated moving and they're all having this Gaussian blur effect over it. So I'm working in full K quality here and it's on full resolution. So it's, it's pretty heavy to load, um, but I'll just make it um, two seconds here so you can see uh, if I play this and we get this nice little grainy effect. But then I'm going to add an um, adjustment layer here. So layer new adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this uh, 12 FPS. And I'm going to go add some posterized time to it. Time, posterized time. Put this at 12. So it gets a little, it doesn't move as fast. So here you can see it's loaded. And now we can have, we have this grain pattern, this um, film grain stuff. It's a little, still a little bit visible because in this first example I made, it's a little bit more uh, subtle. So just play around with the opacity, uh, maybe give them all a bit more or less visibility. Um, that seems to do the trick most of the time. Let's make this 20. So yeah, so that's now it's a little less visible as you can see. So um, this is the way you can create this, um, this grain effect. What I encourage you to do is you just make this like 10 seconds or something. And then if you, because the, the background is now black, but, but it's, there's no black background there. If I click on this button here, you can see it's just transparent. And all of these white dots you can see them right now, you can see them a little bit here and there. They are, they are still there. So if you render this out, so go to file, export at the render queue. And then on the output module, go to QuickTime and then for RGB select alpha, um, sorry, format options, go to animation. Okay. RGB plus alpha. All right. And if you then render this out as a video, so it will be an MOV file, then you get a file like this, which is this grain and noise. So if I create a new composition here and I just put the rendered MOV file of this noise layer in it, so put it in there, then we have this noise animated and this is just a video file. So it's way less um, difficult to render. So if you create a new solid over here and make this red or whatever, put it on the back. And here you can see now we have this white speckle uh, on top of it. Um, and if you want to make it uh, more visible, duplicate it one time. So we have a bit more visibility of it. And you can even get, give this a color. So if you go to the effect tint and add a tint to it uh, and map the white to, let's say something more bluish then or something. Oh, it needs to be visible. Make it uh, green. Okay. And then copy this effect to that one and you have these green dots or you can make them dark red or whatever you want. And that's how you can make this grain effect, um, rendering it as a video and using that for later if you want, uh, which works really great. Thanks for watching. You can download all of the project files uh, in this video and also the grain and noise MOV that I created. Just you can get mine if you want. When you support me on Patreon, there you can get access to all the project files for every tutorial I upload and also get some exclusive stuff as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.